Yo, what's up everybody? It's your boy Big Dre. Yo, what's good YouTube? It's your boy Big Dre 357 back with another video and today I'm going to give you my 500 round review and ultimately final thoughts on the Canic Mete SFT. All right. I've had this gun for about a week now been carrying it pretty much every day since I got it. Um, I've been carrying it in the Canic holster that it came with. And um, I've been shooting the hell out of it pretty much every day. Plus I've been letting other people shoot it. So it's got some rounds to it. I got some feedback on it. I got some pros, some cons. Um, it doesn't take long to really fill out a gun and understand whether or not you're gonna like it or not. Oh, by the way, shout out to my guy, Jay the Shooter. But uh, we're gunned for life. But check this out. So, before we get into this, firearm is clear. There's nothing in there. It is clear. I want to talk about this holster. All right. This holster. If you want to use it for a EDC holster, concealed carry holster, it's fucking garbage. You feel me? Um, I would not do that. If you just want a range holster, it'll be cool. Um, depending on how thick your belt is, it's going to slide up and down. These may even come unhooked. You can see they're not very sturdy but they will come unhooked. I had that happen to me a couple of times. It does slide on the belt like this. Um, the, the gun rides in it kind of high, so it has a tendency to want to kind of tilt out. So you got to have a very good sturdy belt for it. Um, you're supposed to be able to take these clips off by taking these screws out and putting them on the other side make it in the waistband holster. I have not had any luck with that because when you try and take these screws out back here, you can see there's these little grommets or whatever on this side. You can feel these, they'll actually be spinning when you're trying to unscrew the screws. So it's not even working, you know what I'm saying? So I wore it outside the waistband. I mean, to test it out, you know, it was cool. For a range holster, it's cool, but I would not use this for my EDC holster. Now, for this guy. So, I've been carrying it with the uh, 18 round mag in it. And I wasn't gonna carry it with the 20 round mag, just because of how this is, but I've been carrying it with the 18 round mag with the magwell installed. I told you I was gonna install the magwell and that's what it looks like installed. So this is basically how I've been carrying it, but with the 18 round mag. Mag is empty, like I said, and this is the 20 round mag. And I would say with a loaded magazine, this gun is heavy. It does have some weight to it. it does have some weight to it. That's big facts. Even empty, it's got a little weight to it. 
But when you got it fully loaded, one in the head, 18 in the mag, gun gets heavy. So you need a good sturdy belt, good solid, well-made holster to really carry this gun uh, effectively. Um, one thing I didn't like about it, and it doesn't really bother me because it does help with the recoil, this gun is a little top heavy. It is a little top heavy. Um, but it balances out once you load the gun, but when you're shooting the gun, it, I'm assuming it does help with the recoil because this thing is accurate as hell. This is probably the most accurate out of the box firearm I have ever shot in my life. The trigger on this thing is absolutely amazing. And the more you shoot it, the better it gets. All right. And that's just what it is. It's already the best trigger out of the box. And it just keeps getting better and better the more you shoot it, the more rounds you put through it. Um, these sights. I hate three die sights anyway. But I hate three die sights that are just plain white sights. If you're going to do three die sights, at least give me nice sights. But these are just plain white sights. They're easy to pick up and acquire. They're easy to get to target acquisition. But at the end of the day, if it's dark in your house, like my house, if all the lights is off, it's pitch black in the house. So you wouldn't even be able to see these sights. So I will be changing out the sights on this. That's a must for me. Loving this mag release. It's right there. It does what it's supposed to do. It's not too low. It's not too small. It's not too big. It's just right. Love the mag release. Um, I was talking to my partner about this gun. He said one thing he found that he hated was on previous mechanics, you could just pull the takedown lever down and take the slide off without having to pull the slide back kind of like a Glock. And I thought that was the case too. I was just doing it just by natural instinct because that's what I'm used to. But actually, take your, trip, your magazine out. You can literally just pull the takedown tab, watch. You'll see it move a little bit. And then take it right off. And it comes right off. Now you can see it, it's dirty in there. I've been shooting this thing, so it's dirty in there. This thing has been shot quite a bit. Uh, it's had lots and lots, probably out of the 500 plus rounds that's been put through this, I know at least, uh, I'd say 300 of it, maybe 350 rounds of it was steel case. It was nickel plated steel, but steel case. Um, this is a, I love the fact that they used uh, a steel guide rod and spring assembly in here. <clears throat> that held up fine. The barrel is impressive. All the rounds put through here, and it doesn't really have any wear. You can see a faint little wear mark right in here and up here. But other than that, it really doesn't have much wear. Um, most guns, you can, especially Glocks, you can see the wear in there. Um, so it doesn't have a whole lot of wear. And everything in here is nasty in there, but everything looks good. It's wearing fine. Um, I love this gun, man. It's a very well-made gun. Of course, just like everything, everything has its pros and cons. So, for me, this gun is a little bit bigger than what I'm used to carrying. So, <clears throat> that's something that I'm having to get used to as well. Um, it is bigger than what I'm used to carrying. So, 
That's one thing I don't really like is, is the size. I wish it was a little bit smaller, but it's fine. I get used to it. I'm still gonna carry it because it's a, it's a very accurate, well-built gun and it runs. The thing runs. But the slide, you see how I was fixing to put the slide on there? Really all you have to do is line up these tabs on the side with the, the little rails and just set it down on there and then you're good to go but yeah dope gun man um there were a couple of hiccups but it wasn't the gun it was ammo related um that nickel plated steel ammo that ammo will run in some guns, some guns it doesn't run in. A lot of people kind of have issues with it running in their guns. So I'm not gonna say it was the gun. I'm gonna chalk that up to the ammo because I know for a fact myself personally shooting that ammo and watching other people shoot that ammo is not the greatest ammo. But if you just wanna go to the range and shoot some cheap ammo, it is cheap and it's available. You know what I'm saying? Uh, other than that, I didn't need hiccups with the gun. It runs fine. Um, I put about 150 rounds of uh, bell and brass through it, and it spit that shit out like it was nothing. Um, the, the recoil, it does have some muzzle flip, um, but it's because of this, this kind of heavy slide, but at the same time, it reciprocates fast. So you're back on target fast. You get good target acquisition between rounds quickly. And uh, so it's very accurate. For people that are not typically that accurate, I saw some few, few people that I let shoot this that typically are not that accurate. They're not very good shooters. And it looked like they were better shooters. This gun is just accurate. Even, it'll, even if you can't shoot you'll look like you can shoot when you're shooting this gun. It's like, the gun is just accurate. The trigger is phenomenal. So like one lady I let shoot it, she was like, I got, she calls them the flinties where you do this right here before you shot. And uh, she said, the trigger is so soft and it's, you know, it, it breaks so, so smooth. She didn't have time to have the flinties. By the time she was trying to have the flinties, she'd already fired the gun. So, but she fell in love with it. You know what I'm saying? Everybody that shot this gun fell in love with it. Two people have said they wanted to buy one. And um, a couple of them have already bought it. So people are shooting it and they're loving the gun. It's a fantastic gun. Um, this Magwell, it fits perfectly, at least in my hand. My hand sits right on the bottom of it right here. Fits perfect in my hand. So it helps me get a better purchase on the gun. And when I'm shooting, the gun stays in my hand a lot better with this Magwell on here. It helps keep this pinky on there. It won't go nowhere, it like locks your hand in place. I like that. Um, like I said, there's not too much um, that I don't like about this gun. Mainly the sights, the size, and the weight. Like I said, it's a little bit heavy. Once you put a fully loaded mag in it, this thing turns into a little pig. And uh, it's got some weight to it. And it's bigger than what I'm used to. It's a full size gun. I'm used to carrying compacts and subcompacts. But other than that, I absolutely love the gun. One thing I do like a lot is the fact that out of the box from the factory, um, as you can see, this has got a double undercut. I love that. If Glock did that, that would be way better. But from the factory, it comes with a double undercut. I like that a lot. Um, the slide release, love it. It, it, it was perfect, worked out perfect. Even with my high grip, it still worked out perfect. 
didn't have any issues with the slide not locking back anything like that i kept the i guess it's the medium back strap or small whatever they call it the back strap that was on the gun when i got it i left it on there because it feels perfect for my hand so i left it on there and so i've thoroughly enjoyed shooting this gun um carrying it not so much a lot of that had to do with this guy the holster don't like the holster like i said for the range cool the build quality of it as far as like the actual holster itself this is a nice thick nice kydex but these clips are trash um the way the gun rides in it and i'll show you it sits in it kind of high it rides high in this holster so you have to have a certain kind of belt to support this all right so other than that phenomenal gun i would definitely be purchasing more mechanics in the future um definitely especially any variants of this one i'd definitely be getting those um a lot of people that already have canics and have, and have had canics said that they absolutely love this gun and like i said the ones that picked it up said it's their favorite out of all of them even the elite series um i i played with the elite series in the shop but i haven't actually fired one so i can't speak to how they shoot but man this if you if you're on the fence about getting one just hop on over the fence and go ahead and make that purchase it's well worth the money for $519 everything you get in this package is crazy bro you don't get half the stuff you get with this gun and a Glock and for me honestly I don't know about long term reliability but I like this way more than I do Glocks this right here is one of my favorite guns period the Glock 19X. I'm going to be doing a comparison video with the Glock 19X and the Canik TP9. I mean Canik Mete uh, SFT. I'm going to be doing a comparison video between the two. Um, and I'll probably I may do a three-way comparison with the the 19X, the Mete and my Smith & Wesson M&P 2.0, 3.6 inch. Because that, that Smith & Wesson is my absolute favorite pistol, period. So I may do a three-way um, comparison between them. And let y'all know what I think, shooting all of them side by side um, and go from there. I've been looking at some lights to put on here. I think I found the light that I'm gonna go with and I know what sights I'm going with, and I'm also thinking about putting a red dot on this. I'm thinking about going to Holison um, 507K and uh, throwing that on here. So there's going to be some mods coming. I just ordered uh, a new trigger for it. The trigger that's coming for it, it does not change the trigger pull weight or the feel of the trigger pull. It just takes away all of the pre-travel and uh, stuff like that. It takes away that, that extra travel and movement in the trigger when you're going to fire. And it sets it out to where it resets further out versus all the way back here at the wall. So, But the actual pull weight and everything will still be the same. But yeah, man, that's my thoughts and opinions on this gun. Uh, one other thing I did like uh, while carrying this was the loaded chamber indicator and the cop indicator on the back i don't know if you noticed that but right there there's that little hole and when you cock it it pops out lets you know it's been cocked and ready to fire and when there's a round of chamber the little indicator will lift up those actually came in handy i like this loaded chamber indicator because it's very low and non-obtrusive uh, it just sticks up enough that you can glance at it and tell, okay, all right, there's something in that chamber because it's not sitting flush. 
So they did a really good job with that. But hope y'all enjoyed the video, man. Remember, BigDrake357.com to get your merch. And uh, we got a new channel sponsor. I'll announce that once the first video for them drops. If you know, you know. There's a few people that I already know. But yeah, got a new channel sponsor, man. So adding some new stuff into the game. But man, I hope you all have a, a blessed day. And uh, appreciate y'all for supporting the channel. And we'll catch y'all on the next one, man. Be blessed. Stay dangerous. Deuces.